Hello, honor students. I am going to work through question number 13 with you. Mr. Woods is not able to join me right now. Um, but this is one of the more challenging ones on that mole conversion problem worksheet. So we just want to kind of give you a little heads up as to how to approach a problem like this if you're having difficulty. So if you look at the problem, and it would help if you had that out and handy, so if you need to go pause it and go get it, please do. Um, but I want to just start reading through the problem and trying to figure out what's important. So in question 13, they have the um, density of aluminum is 2.70 grams per milliliter. And again, as soon as you start reading a problem, I would start writing down things you think are important so that it helps you. And then it tells you if aluminum atoms are spherical with a diameter, and the diameter is given, and that's of a single aluminum atom, that's equal to 2.96 times 10 to the minus 8 centimeters. And as soon as I see this diameter of aluminum atom and I know that they're spherical, right away I think, okay, what I know what I can do with this. I can go ahead and find the volume of an aluminum atom. And that's probably going to be helpful down the road. So I'm, I'm, I'm starting to think that. Now, it says... If they're spherical, what percent of any aluminum samples empty space unoccupied by atoms? So I want you to envision if you were to say magic school bus yourself into, let's say we had a block of aluminum. So inside that block of aluminum, it's made of these spherical atoms. And so they're stacked in here somehow. And if you envision this as your block of aluminum, in, in between, in here, there's basically empty space in between all of the atoms. So we have to kind of understand that. Now, let's think about what the question is asking. It wants to know what percent of an aluminum sample is empty space. So what I want is a percent of the space, or maybe if I think about it, if I think about this cube itself, you know, the cube itself has some volume to it. And the volume of that piece of aluminum is really composed of the atoms and the space in between the atoms. If I want the percent of empty space, what I want is I want the, the volume of the space in between the atoms divided by the whole volume of the block, which is composed of the atoms and the space. That's really what this question is asking for, is a percentage based on that. So, when I go back, I have this density of this aluminum. Now, the density of aluminum is true for any block of aluminum. And so that density is very much related to my picture here. It's the density of both the block of the atoms and the space. We don't normally think of it that way, but that's really what it's talking about. Here's the problem. There's no other information given. So this percentage of empty space, it doesn't matter if I have a tiny block or if I have a, a humongous block, the percentage of empty space will be the same. So I'm going to need to figure out how much aluminum I have. So I'm going to do that by assuming a sample size. So, how big? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe I'll, I'll assume a volume. Maybe I, I want to start with a 10 cubic centimeter piece, or a 100 cubic centimeter piece, or a 57 cubic centimeter piece. It doesn't, ma doesn't matter. I typically like to do 10 or 100 because it's a nice even number. So let's assume that I have a block of aluminum that is 100 cubic centimeters. That's the block. Now I start looking at what's given over here, and I notice a couple of things. I notice that if I have a density, then that helps me to go from grams to milliliters, or cubic centimeters, because of course those are the same. So if I have cubic centimeters or milliliters, I can find grams. If I have grams, I can find cubic centimeters. Well, if I assume I have the sample size of 100 cubic centimeters, I can use the density to convert that into grams. So. 2.70 grams per cubic centimeter. So now I have a mass. I might think, well, I don't know where to go from here. So 
I, I still don't know how I can get the volume of the space or the volume of the atoms in space. Well, actually, I do know some of that because if I assume I have a 100 cubic centimeter sample, that is the volume of the atoms in space. But I think I don't know how to get the volume of the space. So I'm going to start thinking about what I can do, and this is a really good habit to get into. You might not know how to get from step A to step Z, but maybe you know how to go from step A to step B. This is grams of aluminum. And if I think, well, what do I know what I can do with grams? I can change it into moles. That's always a great idea. So when in doubt, change to moles. So I look up the periodic table. What is the molar mass of aluminum? It's 26.98 grams in a mole of aluminum. I think, okay, I got moles of aluminum. Well, that still doesn't seem to strike an, an, a nerve with me. So. I am interested in the atoms in this picture up here, so maybe I can convert that into atoms. So I know I've got in a mole of aluminum, there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So that's helping me figure out how many atoms are actually inside this block up here. I know the volume of the block, and now I know how many atoms are in the block. So I think we're getting somewhere. So all right, I got I got to pause for a moment. I don't know what that number turns out to be. Oops, didn't mean to use my highlighter there. All right, so I'm gonna plug this in starting here. So I've got 100 cubic centimeters times 2.70 divided by 26.98 times 6.022 times 10. Don't forget to use your EE button to the 23rd and Six, and let's make this a hundred point. I'm making the volume, so I'm going to choose that to be three sig figs. Um, 6.03 times 10 to the 24th atoms. And I don't have Mr. Woods here to check my math, so I'm going to hope that that is actually correct. Perhaps if you threw it in, you'll know. So this is how many atoms are in this block. Now let's go back to what was given up here. There were two things that were given. The density of aluminum, which I've already used, and the diameter of an aluminum atom, which I know I could use to find the volume of an aluminum atom. Well, if I go back down here, I know how many atoms I have. If I know the volume of each atom, I could find the volume of just the atoms, which I think is going to help me find the volume of the space. So let's go ahead and find the volume of an individual atom. If it's a sphere, volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So that's going to be equal to 4 thirds pi. Now my radius, this was the diameter, 2.96 times 10 to the minus 8th. That's a diameter. So I need to divide it by 2 to get it to be a radius. That's the radius cubed. So if we plug that into your calculator, I get a volume of 1.36 times 10 to the minus 23 cubic centimeters. And I'm going to just make this a little simple so I remember. That's per one atom. That's the volume of an atom. So now I think, OK, I know how many atoms I have, and I know the volume of an atom. So I'm going to use that together. So I have 6.03 times 10 to the 24th atoms. Let's find out the volume of just those atoms. There's no empty space in that. That's just the atoms. So I know it's 1.36 times 10 to the minus 23 cubic centimeters per atom. Right, that's from here. And I don't know what that number turns out to be. So 6.03 times 10 to the 24th times 1.36 times 10 to the minus 23. And I get 81, oops, I got to round it. 82.0 cubic centimeters. Now that is just the atoms. OK, back to where we started. I made this assumption way up here that my volume of my block was 100 cubic centimeters. That was atoms and space. I know that the volume of just the atoms is 82 cubic centimeters. So that's just the atoms. So if I subtract those two, I get the volume of just the space. And if I am 
interested in finding the percent that is empty space, then all I need to do is I take the volume of the space, 18 cubic centimeters, divided by the volume of the atoms in the space, which was 100 cubic centimeters, times 100 gives you 18% empty space. And that's the end of the problem. So I want to just point out a couple of things to you, just in terms of thinking about problem solving. When you get your givens, think about what can you do with them? What might that help you to be? Another thing is, sometimes it helps to assume a sample size. If you don't have one, perhaps you want to assume one. And then the last thing is, is as you work through the problem, if you don't know how to get from here to your final answer, think about well, what, where can you go from step to step? Because it might help you to figure out where to go from there. If you don't know how to go from the beginning to the end, go from the beginning to the next step. See what that leads. All right, good luck, you guys. Make sure you try the rest of the problems. and.